Hello there, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK. I hope you all had a pleasant festive season yesterday and I mean it is continuing today so I hope you are enjoying it and feeling safe and with the people that you're with. And I thought it was really appropriate for me to do this video because how fragile relationships are and how we don't realise how much our behaviour impacts those relationships. I came across the word fubbing yesterday. And what fubbing is, it's like a, um, you know, an amalgamation of two words, the phone and snubbing. And they've put these words together and called it fubbing. And it's how you can snub your partner or your loved ones by picking up the phone as they're talking to you, especially when they want to talk about something important. Now, I know we've all done it, where your partner is talking and you're like, oh, you know, going to go on and on. Let me see. The phone goes off. You pick it up. And while they're talking, you're there on your phone. Now, can you imagine if that phone was an individual? Would you do the same thing when your partner is talking to you? Would you immediately um, just turn your attention to that person coming in the room? I don't think you would because you'd be aware that it's very rude and very disrespectful. But with the phone, somehow it becomes normal. We've normalised rudeness. We've normalised the fact that you can snub someone and it's OK because it's a phone. It's an inanimate, it's an inanimate object. And the thing is with that is that we, well, I was even, when I was writing up my notes, which I'll share with you later, so I was saying, the phone is quite narcissistic. It demands attention all the time. It's a bit like a young baby, you know, who, when it cries, it's expecting you to pick up and attend to it. And that's like our phones. We have to be aware that they are quite narcissistic in demanding our attention all the time, taking away our power and empowering and an object and I don't think we realize that that's what we're doing because what is it about what we don't want to miss when a notification comes through the phone why is it that even when you're talking to somebody and this isn't everyone of course it's not but why is it that you feel compelled to pick up the phone and find out what that notification is now, it's very hard for people like vloggers and um, people in the limelight or in the celebrity world to, to ignore those um, notifications because those notifications and those people are what what's keeping them at their status, keeping them at a level. And if they ignore them, then they could be seen as being selfish people that want to write to them or communicate with them. They might get a bad reputation. And then can you imagine how demanding that is on that individual, feeling that he or she is compelled to respond to each notification just in case that some, she snubs somebody who she doesn't mean to snub. So what they do is instead they snub the person who is in front of them. By snubbing or fubbing the person who's in front of them, they are actually doing the same thing they don't want to do to the strangers who are on the other side of the phone. And how would they feel if they were having a conversation? They've built up this conversation. They've wanted to discuss it with them all day. And as soon as the person opens up, as soon as you or me open up my mouth to discuss something, that person picks up the phone and starts... Yeah, you know they're not paying attention you know they're distracted and it's rude but it's not consciously rude that's the sad thing people have become so addicted and they're giving their phones priority over and above everything and everyone else and we need to be aware of that power we're giving to our phone we need to call call it for what it is. You know, it is a narcissistic instrument. It demands attention all the time. 
And if you don't give it, unless you turn your notifications off, it's going to go on and on and on. I have periods where I turn my notifications off. And what I find is when I turn my notification off, it could be several hours before I look at a WhatsApp or a or any one of my notifications. But if that notification is on, psychologically, I feel I've got to respond to it. And I think that's what happens to all of us. So let me just go through my notes quickly. And um, I hope you find it interesting. So you're about to launch into an important conversation. You've been rehearsing all day. And as soon as you start talking, the person you're talking to takes out the phone and starts fiddling around with it. Sometimes they say, excuse me, sometimes they don't. Sometimes it's just a natural thing that they do. They don't see nothing wrong with it. Anyway, this is called fubbing, and according to some researchers, it's killing relationships, and I can understand why. Because on the, on the one hand, how can you be jealous over a phone? If you're in a partnership, how can it um, seems to be unreasonable to be jealous of a phone or to be annoyed with somebody because they've got a phone. It's not like they're out there with a man, but sometimes, or with a woman, but sometimes you'll think, bloody hell, at least I can compete with another woman or another man. But how do I compete with the intention that that phone is demanding for my spouse or my partner? So why is what so why is what is on our phones more important than the person in front of us? Is it about taking each other for granted, afraid of missing out? What is fubbing? Fubbing is an example of a neologism, a neologism, a neologism, which just means a word that has only recently been added to the language. And fubbing. The merging of phone and snubbing was born, a.k.a. a portmanteau. So it's just a new word that they come up with. You know, they, they come up with these urban dictionaries and all kinds of new words that they add to the dictionary. So you can understand when people got excited, like in 2007, when the iPhone came out. I mean, it's obvious when a new thing comes out, you're going to be excited about it. But for Christ's sake, we've had phones for over 20 years. Why aren't we bored like everything else that we get and we're bored with? You get a, a new jumper and a couple of weeks later, you're fed up with it. You get a new toy or a new instrument in the house, you, you're fed up with it. But you don't get fed up with the phone. What is it about the phone? Why it captivates you so much? And I, maybe I shouldn't just restrict to the phone. It could be the tablet, it could be the laptop. But those, I put those three in the same category. You don't get bored with it. In it, it, it's it's quite weird because it's almost like the longer we're getting used to it, the more obsessed we're getting with it. We're not we're not distancing ourselves from it at all. It's like we're getting more and more drawn in. What is it? Have you thought about what it is that tugs at your heartstrings? A lot of things that we um, desire or that we want or that we love is because they give us a feeling of safety. They give us a feeling of security. They endorse us. They acknowledge us. So there's something about that phone that gives us a feeling of safety, that acknowledges us, that nurtures us. In what, and because it's got so many facets to it, there is something in it for everyone. Someone is going to be nurtured by their, the content of the phone or the app in the phone. Someone's going to be validated by something in the phone. Someone's going to be nurtured, acknowledged by something in the phone. So that is what is drawing people in. So... We haven't got we haven't got bored with this new toy. And it's not even like as the um, years go on, it, it changes that much. It doesn't. I mean, it changes internally in the sense that it's got more um, security facets to it, maybe more tracking devices in it. 
and maybe better cameras in it. But I mean, the actual phone, I'm not quite sure why it is so addictive. So what is it about the phone that makes it take over our relationships and is the third leg in a, or should I say third wheel, in our, in our romantic dinner? I mean, you go out to restaurants now. How many restaurants do you see where you see people talking to each other? Most of the time they're on the phone, unless it's a brand new relationship and they know better. But most of the time, each individual from the old to the young, they're on the phone in between taking up or eating and it shouldn't be allowed you know there should be some kind of protocol in restaurants unless it's an emergency that you don't take out your phone keep it in your bag switch it off like if you're in a meeting you wouldn't have your phone on in a meeting would you but phones are now like cigarettes as soon as there's a break in the meeting you run off you go and get a cigarette, you get your fix, you get your fix from your phone. Nearly 6 billion people have smartphones. And I guess because they're so expensive, they want to exploit every aspect of it. I mean, I'm just as guilty. I know sometimes I'm having a conversation with my partner and he says something to me and I'm like, what does that mean? And he says, um... And it's taken so long to tell me. I go on Google. The phone has interrupted the flow. Instead of me sitting there waiting patiently for him to explain. Um, do we even feel guilty when someone starts talking and we pick up our phones? Writing this article, I know I've been guilty of it. And being a fubby, it's actually quite rude. Yeah, so we can be there, we can be sitting down talking and as soon as they start talking, you pick up your phone for some reason. It's almost like, it's almost like a reflex action. We have to learn to put our phones away. Especially when the people who are nearest and dearest to you are in close proximity. You're not worrying that they're going to call you and say they're running late or they might have been in an accident or something. They're all in your household. But then somebody say, oh, but supposing, you know, I've got an expecting a fresh, uh, um, I'm expecting my friend to call. Oh, I'm expecting a delivery. Oh, you'll always have an excuse. You'll always find an excuse to have your phone on standby, in earshot in your vision you could always find an excuse to have it there but you have to be aware of what that's doing to you if you think of your phone as a person this is what i was saying before that is your partner or anyone talking to you you turn your attention to the other person how would you feel that is why fubbing impacts your relationships if you were to see the phone as a person Maybe we wouldn't allow it to interfere with our conversations, lovemaking, discussions that we have with our partners. They're like interfering friends, those who keep interrupting the flow of the discussion. The study published in the Journal of Social and Personal Relationships concluded that people found it harder to form good quality relationships with others in the presence of a mobile phone. This effect was even more pronounced when the pairs of individuals were asked to discuss a personally meaningful topic. I can see why, because if I'm having a conversation and I don't know something, I've already said that. So competing with a phone is difficult and it can make partners feel less satisfied with their social interactions, less trusting of their interaction with their partner, and this could result in jealousy and low mood. Is my partner really interested in what I'm saying? Does she really or does he really care about me? People with higher levels of empathy were found to be even more vulnerable to this effect. And this isn't only about partners, but loved ones, parents, relatives and friends. Anyone who 
you could take for granted and feel, oh, yeah, I know them. They know me. It doesn't matter if I pick up my phone. It doesn't matter if I start going through it. I'm listening. They know I'm here. I'm listening. But you're not effectively or actively listening. You're just there. You're not really interested in what they're saying. The smartphones are invaluable in keeping us connected to our loved ones, but it is when we try to stay connected with the world, it becomes a problem. So like I said, if it's to do with your loved ones, that's not bad. But when you think about Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, all of those different platforms, all commanding your attention from goodness knows, depending on how many followers you have, or subscribers, or, you know, friends, or whatever. If they keep on commenting and giving you, um, you know, so that the motivation, the notification is activated, that's demanding your attention. And you are sitting there thinking, oh, somebody's, somebody's interested in me, somebody's written something, somebody wants to say something, somebody's acknowledged me, somebody has praised me, somebody has insulted me, whatever it is. It's pulling you to answer that phone and respond to it. And you have to let go. Let go of the things you love. It's not going anywhere. Worse, what is the worst that can happen? You can hear that somebody who you love has died. And you could say, oh, if only I picked up my phone. But what would that change? It's not going to change. It's not going to bring that person back to life. So why do we prioritise checking our phones over listening to our loved ones, talking, sharing important moments? What is the comfort and feeling of safety it brings? Those are the key factors we look for in being happy. You know, is that cortisol? Is that, you know, dopamine? How does connecting with the phone do that? Are you addicted to responding to every sound your phone makes, like a newborn baby you are worried about? Is it enough just to keep your phone in view but challenge yourself to resist temptation? I.e., like sometimes we say, you know, we can't keep picking up the baby every time it cries. Once you know it's fed, and changed and clean. They say you shouldn't pick up the baby every time it cries. That's controversial in some cases, but I'm trying to make that parallel with the phone. Your phone is narcissistic. It is an attention seeker. You need to treat it like a narcissist. While you give your phone the attention it seeks, you are alienated loved ones. And you're not giving any time to yourself. How do you give time to yourself when you're controlled by a mobile device? How do you get a chance to reflect on your behaviour, what you're doing, what you're thinking, what you're saying? How do you have those silent moments? Or well, maybe that's what you're running away from. Maybe you don't want those silent moments. Maybe the phone rescues you from um, yourself. So what is the worst that could happen if you miss out on a notification? That's what I've said, but that's all I'm going to say for now. But it's something to think about as we head into the new year. And I hope you have a wonderful and safe entrance into the new year, whatever it is that you're doing. That's all for now. Bye-bye.